When the density of a fluid is temperature dependent, adding heat to the fluid will change its density. If the heat is added in such a way that some of the fluid is at a higher or lower temperature than its surroundings, flow will be induced by buoyancy forces, and these forces are the result of gravity acting on the density differences. When fluid motion is caused purely by buoyancy, meaning there are no pumps or fans or mechanical devices involved, we call this natural convection. And therefore, to set up natural convection in fluent, you just need to make density a function of temperature and turn on gravity. I'll start by talking about gravity and then come back to density a bit later. You can turn on gravity in the general task page, and that's easy enough to do. Or you can also go to the setting up physics tab and open the operating conditions panel, and we'll use some of these other inputs in this panel in just a minute. When you turn on gravity, two things happen. First, fluent adds a body force term to the momentum equation. This is a perfectly good equation, but it can be manipulated into a form that's more convenient to solve numerically. To do this, fluent uses a mathematical trick where a modified pressure, P prime, is defined as the actual pressure minus rho naught times gravity times Z. And basically this is like saying, we already know that there will always be a hydrostatic pressure field given by P equals rho naught times G times Z. And because we know it's there, we can subtract it. And then we only have to solve for the part of the pressure field that we don't already know. When this definition is substituted into the momentum equation, the pressure gradient and body force terms change slightly, like you see here. And then the value of rho naught is taken from the value entered in the panel for the operating density. It's strongly recommended that you set this value equal to the value of the density at ambient conditions outside of your computational domain. If you uncheck the box, Fluent will use an average value, but it's almost always better for you to set the value yourself. Now this might all seem like a lot of details, but it's actually important, and there are only two things you need to remember. First, when you define boundary conditions, the value you enter is P prime, not P. And second, when you display contours or report pressures, you'll be getting values of P prime. So now that you know what happens when gravity is turned on, let's talk about density. For natural convection, you can use any temperature dependent density definition, including any of the real gas models, piecewise linear or polynomial or user-defined. However, the most commonly used models are Boussinesq, incompressible ideal gas, and ideal gas. Both of the ideal gas models are discussed in another video, so I will only talk about the Boussinesq here. It is based on the idea that if the density of the fluid at a temperature T0 is given by rho naught, then for small changes in temperature, the corresponding changes in density are linear and can be written like this, where beta is a thermal expansion coefficient. You can see that if we rearrange this and multiply by gravity, the left-hand side is the same as the body force term that we looked at before. So what happens in fluent is that it just replaces the body force term with the right-hand side of this equation. Linear variation of density is only realistic over a small temperature range so it's recommended to use the Boussinesq model when the product of beta and T minus T naught is small. The advantage of the Boussinesq model is that it allows a constant density to be used in the other terms in the momentum equation, which can often lead to faster convergence. This might also seem like a lot of detail, but Boussinesq is one of the most frequently used models in natural convection, and it is important so that you'll know what to enter in the panel. First, when you choose Boussinesq in the Materials panel, the value that you enter here is rho naught in the equation that we were just looking at. The default value is zero, but density cannot be zero, so you can't use that value. It's required to enter a proper value for rho naught in your system. Second, the thermal expansion coefficient is hiding out of sight at the bottom of the panel. Do not forget to scroll down and enter a value because the default value of zero would be the same as no buoyancy. Thermal expansion coefficient is a material property, so you can find appropriate values in engineering handbooks 
or sometimes on Google. The final setting you need for the Boussinesq model is T0, and Fluent takes this value from the operating temperature field in the operating conditions panel. There are two things you need to know about the operating temperature. One is that it should match the density that you entered in the materials panel under Boussinesq, and the other is that operating temperature is always on the panel. But unless you're using the Boussinesq model for density, it has no effect at all on the solution, so you can just ignore it and keep the default value. If you use any other temperature-dependent options for density in your natural convection model, there are no special steps that you need to take. Just enter values like you would for any other problem, and make sure you have entered gravity and the operating density. Before finishing, I want to quickly summarize the key steps in solving a natural convection problem in Fluent. And those steps are, you have to turn on gravity and enter the operating density. You have to select a temperature-dependent density method in the materials panel. And if the temperature variation in your system is small, use the Boussinesq model. And finally, remember that when gravity is on, P' is used for boundary conditions and post-processing 